we thought we knew the Three-Eye Atlas. Because just days ago, the very large telescope in Chile captured something no one expected. A signal, not a light, not a pulse, but a spectral whisper from deep space, an elemental fingerprint buried in the data. It wasn't water, it was nickel, alone. No iron, no twin, no trace of the element that should always be there. And that changes everything, because in the entire history of observational astronomy, nickel has never been found without iron. Not in comets, not in asteroids, not in meteorites. Not once, until now. This isn't just another anomaly, it's a fracture in the pattern. And that fracture opens the door to something else, a process we don't understand, a chemistry we've never seen a technology we didn't expect. Whatever the answer is, the question has changed. 3i Atlas is no longer just strange. It's potentially unprecedented. And what comes next may redefine what we thought was possible. It started with light, broken into wavelengths, analyzed by one of the most powerful instruments on Earth, the Very Large Telescope. Using high-resolution spectroscopy, scientists watched three eye atlas closely from early July through late August. Not just a snapshot, but a cinematic sequence of its chemical evolution. They saw something emerge, not once, not twice, but consistently, unmistakably, a spectral signature of nickel gas, pure, sharp, persistent, but something was missing. Iron, it wasn't just low, it was absent, completely undetected. That matters because in the cosmic forge, nickel and iron are inseparable. They're born together in supernovae. They travel together through space. They appear together in every comet, asteroid, and meteorite ever studied. So when one appears without the other, science stumbles. Some saw it immediately as a red flag or a beacon. After all, nickel dominant alloys aren't just unusual. They're engineered. On Earth, they're used in spacecraft, satellites, and high-performance reactors, materials forged for heat, stress, and radiation. And yet, here it is, streaming silently from a visitor between stars. Was this a sign? A shield? A shell? Speculation erupted. Some suggested the nickel might be the remnant of an artificial structure, a layer of plating, worn down by time and distance. Others warned caution. Nickel, they argued, can vaporize more easily than iron. Under solar radiation, certain metal carbonyl compounds can release nickel preferentially. Iron, in contrast, clings to mineral structures. Harder to free, harder to see. Still, the data remains clear. Nickel is there. Iron is not. At least, not yet. And that silence, that spectral gap, is what keeps the question alive. Because in science, What's missing can matter more than what's found. And in this case, the missing element might be the loudest signal of all. Science doesn't flinch, not when the unknown knocks, not when data disrupts the expected. It leans in. So when 3 I Atlas whispered its chemical secret, nickel, without iron, scientists didn't declare alien life. They sharpened their instruments, and they remembered something important. Nickel and iron may be born together, but they behave very differently once exposed to light, heat, and radiation. Nickel, it turns out, has a tendency to flee. In the presence of solar energy, it bonds with carbon monoxide, forming nickel carbonyl, a volatile compound that vaporizes easily, releasing nickel gas into space. Iron, not so cooperative, it prefers to stay locked inside mineral lattices, dense, stable, stubborn. It takes much more heat to break it free, which means that under the same conditions, nickel always escapes first. That's not just theory. We've seen it before. In 2 I Borisov, the second interstellar object ever recorded, scientists observed an imbalance, nickel vapor outpacing iron. The same phenomenon occurred with Comet Halley and others closer to home always more nickel than iron. But still, iron was there. Faint, but detectable. 3 I Atlas is different. So far, its signal contains no iron at all, not a trace. Some argue 
it's simply a matter of time. Right now, 3i Atlas is still on its inbound trajectory. Its surface is warming, yes, but slowly. Not enough yet to unlock deeper elements. As it nears the sun, temperatures will rise. And with that heat, iron, if present, may finally emerge. In this view, the absence of iron isn't a mystery. It's a limitation, a sensitivity gap in our instruments, not a hole in our understanding. And the scientists behind the new VLT study, they agree. They've offered three natural explanations for the nickel-only signature. Metal carbonyls, molecules that break down under sunlight, releasing nickel gas. Organic compounds, containing nickel bound to carbon that degrade with proximity to the sun. Nickel-rich dust grains, which sublimate at lower temperatures than iron-bearing minerals. All of these are plausible, grounded in observed chemistry. None require advanced technology, alien engineering, or cosmic intention. Still, no iron. And here's the nuance. Science doesn't require certainty to ask new questions. It thrives in the gray zone between what's known and what's possible. So even as the study rules out artificiality, the anomaly remains. Because this isn't just any interstellar object. It's one moving retrograde with a trajectory that passes unnaturally close to multiple inner planets. An object with a high CO2 emission, a developing coma, and now a pure nickel signature floating through the void like vaporized armor. Yes, science explains, but sometimes it also whispers. And what it's whispering now isn't an answer. It's a challenge. This is where it gets complicated, because no matter how carefully we measure, no matter how precise the data, there's always another force at play. U.S. We are not blank observers. We are storytellers. And when we stare into the darkness of an interstellar object, we don't just see rock and gas. We see meaning, possibility, a mirror. And right now, that mirror is reflecting something unsettling an object drifting backward through our solar system, shedding metals and patterns we can't fully explain, emitting compounds we've never observed in this ratio, and following a path that some believe is too perfect to be random. Is it a comet? Most likely. But the doubt, however small, has already taken root. And behind that doubt stands a name, Avi Loeb, the Harvard astrophysicist who shook the scientific world with his claim that one I slash Oumuamua could be an alien probe. Now, he's watching 3 eye Atlas, carefully. In his words, the unusual elemental data has earned this object a 6 out of 10 on the scale of possible artificial origin. It's not proof, not even close, but it's enough to keep looking. And in that space, in that tension between wonder and rigor, we find the very essence of science. Because science isn't a fortress, it's a threshold, a place where logic meets longing, where we test not just the universe, but our own imagination. And what if, just once, the answer isn't natural? What if buried in that nickel is the residue of intention? Not ours, not human, but real. That possibility is terrifying and beautiful, which is why the myth persists not because it's likely, but because it reminds us how little we know. In the end, it may not matter whether 3i Atlas is artificial or not. What matters is that it made us ask the question, seriously, rationally, publicly, and maybe for the first time since Oumuamua, we're listening again, not just to what's out there, but to the silence between. 3i Atlas is still moving, falling, accelerating toward the sun, as if on schedule. With every passing hour, it sheds more of itself. Ices vaporize, dust lifts, and elements long buried are exposed to light. Soon, it will cross the heat threshold, where iron, if present, will finally break free, or won't. And that silence, that absence, will speak volumes. Because if iron never comes, if nickel remains isolated in a pattern too precise to ignore, then what we're looking at may not be debris from a broken star. It may be something left behind, deliberately, a fragment, a remnant, a 
probe or something stranger, not a machine in the way we build them, not a signal we were meant to intercept, but a relic of intention, camouflaged by time, built in a logic we don't yet recognize, operating on scales we never imagined, a message not meant for us, but visible anyway. And isn't that the real fear? Not that we're alone, but that we're being watched by something that stopped speaking long ago. Until then, all we have is drift, metal, light, and a story still unfolding. If you're still listening, still watching the data for ghosts, still wondering if something is watching back, then subscribe to The Cosmic Unknown. Because out here, in the vacuum between certainty and possibility, truth doesn't shout, it waits.